This is a lecture 7 and this lecture is about the power equation of the induction machines. In lecture 6 what we derived was the torque equation of induction motor and we considered the power factor and the general torque equation was derived. And this equation also the power equation can be derived from the equivalent circuit of an induction motor. It's also possible to derive the general torque equation from the equivalent circuit of the induction motor. We will see how to do that. So it was seen that the torque of the induction motor varied with the power factor and the starting torque and the running torque was found out and it was seen that torque varied according to the rotor current, rotor EM flux or the flux in the air gap and the power factor of the machine. So if you look at the equivalent circuit which was derived earlier, it looks like something like this. So V1 is a supply voltage per phase if you consider. Then V1 is a supply voltage to the machine and R1 is a rotor resistance per phase and X1 is a rotor reactance per phase. And I, the, you can see the magnetic circuit carrying current I0 and RC is the coil loss part and XM is the reactance for the magnetizing component or equivalent to the component which produces flux in the machine or the field. And X2 is the reactance of the rotor. And R2 by S is the rotor resistance which is found to be varying with slip. So the power which is transferred across the air gap or the power which was produced in the stator and which is now available at the rotor can be written as I2 square R2 by S that is essentially I2 square into R2 by S that is a rotor current divided by the rotor resistance divided by slip per phase and you multiply it into phase that is a number of phase and it will be 3 for a 3 phase machine. Now the copper losses which will happen in the rotor of the induction machine can be written as per into phase NPH into I2 square divided by R2. I2 is a rotor current and R2 is a rotor reactant resistance. So some amount of power has been transferred from the stator and it is available at the rotor and as the rotor will carry current it will have CU losses or copper losses. So the total power which will be developed in the induction machine or the rotor which is available at the shaft for doing useful work or the mechanical power developed in the machine can be written as the power across the air gap minus power across the rotor and the power across the air gap as derived previously minus the power power in the loss in the rotor that is I square R loss in the rotor will give the total mechanical power output of an induction machine that is NPH is a number of phase I square I2 square is a rotor current into R2 into 1 minus S divided by S that is the amount of power which is developed or which is output of the rotor and although the power output which is available at the shaft will be slightly less than this owing to the consideration of the friction and windage losses Again the mechanical power which is available at the induction machine can be written as 1 minus S into power of the gap that is the output mechanical power and the power of the rotor can be written as S into power of the gap. So that is the output mechanical power and the CU losses happening in the induction machine which can be written in the form of slip. So it is seen that as the slip will be higher the power will be less for the induction machine. So again the part for the mechanical power output can be written in the form of rotor resistance as R2 into 1 minus S divided by S. So it is seen that it is possible to bring the power which is produced in the mechanical as a mechanical output into the rotor equivalent circuit and it varies with slip and at a higher slip the power output of the equivalent machine will be or the induction machine will be less which is very right owing to the fact that when the slip will be less the motor will be rotating at very low speed if slip will be high the rotor will be rotating at very low speed and it will obviously produce lower power so that's how you can derive the equivalent circuit of an induction motor considering the power output or the mechanical power produced by the machine so what we have seen is that of the total power delivered across the air gap to the rotor the fraction 1 minus s is converted to mechanical power and the fraction is decepted as I square R loss or copper loss in the rotor conductors. From this it is evident that an induction motor operating at a high slip is an inefficient machine as the power will be or the power output and the copper losses will be high in that case. 
power output will be less and the copper losses will be high in that case as the slip is high for the machine. Again it is possible to consider the mechanical torque output of the machine as NPH that is the number of phases into I2 square R2 divided by the rotation that is SWS in case of the induction machine. The WS can be written as 2 pi NS that is a mechanical rotation angle rotation of an electrical machine. That's all. If you like this video, please do subscribe, like and comment.